Hi, this is Kat with Beataholic, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the wrapped loom bracelets. And these are exclusive kits by Beataholic. So I have brought out all the colors that you can purchase, and these are featuring the cotton cord. And this is a beautiful black cotton cord, and you'll get this with each of them. You'll get a personalized button, and you can choose your color of beads and wrapping. So these are the available kits that we have for you to purchase. And we also sell these as refill kits, as we call them. So if you've purchased a full kit, which means you'll get the loom with it, you can actually purchase more colorways so that you can create more bracelets without having to purchase another loom. So that's always an option for you as well. But no matter what kit you've purchased, if you just follow along this video, I'll show you exactly how to make them. So what you'll get in your kit Let's assume you bought your full kit, so you'll get your loom. And I just want to show you really quickly that I have mine set up here. But when you purchase your loom, you'll get it in the full box here. And this will come with instructions on how to set it up. So I just want to show that to you very quickly. And that's all I followed to set up my loom here. So you just follow your instructions and you'll be able to set up your loom so you'll be ready to go. You'll also be receiving your cotton cord, your center beads, and these are four millimeter check glass beads. You'll receive a button, the griffin silk. You'll also receive a twisted wire needle and your seed beads as well. You'll also get a little tube of glue and what something that you'll need to provide yourself is just a little scrap of wire or a toothpick to help you applying that glue. And then I also recommend either flush cutters or scissors to help you out and a ruler to help you with any sizing needs. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've poured my beads out and I've taken my Griffin silk off of the card and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that in just a moment. But before we officially dive into making the bracelet, I wanna give you a few tips for sizing. So as you can see here, the way you're gonna to wanna to size, and I'm just gonna kind of flip my button over there because we're gonna tie a knot at one end and then we're gonna do two open knots on the other end so that you'll be able to actually size it in two different places. Now you're welcome to do multiple if you want to add a third um, open hole for your button to slip through. But I just wanna let you know that when you're doing your sizing, what you're gonna to wanna to measure is from one end here with the knot to the other end here, which is where your button will close. So this will give me about a seven inch bracelet. And I'll show you once we get it on our loom how to kind of really gauge that. But just be sure that you are making sure that you have enough space to do your loom. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm gonna set aside my ruler for right now. And I'm going to show you how to set up your Griffin Silk and what's really important about this is that it comes with one of those wire needles already attached to it, but because we're going to be wrapping around our loom, what I need to do is to attach my other needle to the loom. And be careful not to get yours in a little knot. Let me just make sure that comes out, there we go. <laughs> so go ahead and move to the side of your Griffin Silk that does not have the wire needle attached. And all you're gonna do is thread it through and pull it down. And because of the kinks in the Griffin Silk, you can kind of get it in one of those notches. And all you're gonna do is just pull it a little tight because you're gonna want that loop to kind of close up and you can just kind of twist it with your fingers to help it out there. So you can see that little loop is just getting a little tighter around that Griffin Silk so that it's not gonna move for me. So now that I have my Griffin Silk set up, we are ready to cut our cotton cord. Now, what I recommend is always cutting a little bit more cord than you think you're gonna need, because you don't wanna get to a point where you've tried to size it and it, doesn't, it no longer works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut 30 inches of my cotton cord here. And again, you can use scissors or you can use flush cutters. It is entirely up to you. All right, so now that I have my cotton cord, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to slip on my button. 
There we go. <laughs> and keeping those ends together, I'm just gonna make sure that it lands in the center of those two cords. And I'm going to tie my first knot. And this is just a very simple overhand knot. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your cords stay nice and even. And make sure that that knot, you kinda of keep scooching it down so that it's right up next to your button, just like so. And now, here's where we're gonna do a little bit of sizing. So I'm going to move along here and I'm gonna make my first knot at about the six and a half inch mark. So I'm going from knot to knot here and I have that place in my fingers and I'm just gonna tie a knot same as we did before, just a simple overhand knot, and just kind of making sure that it lands about that same place. Before I officially tighten it, I'm just gonna just double check, and I just wanna scoot it back a little bit. So there we go. And you just wanna make sure that both cords are still nice and even. There we go. And now what you're gonna wanna do is sort of look at your button. They're all shaped a little bit differently, so you'll have to do this with your own button here. But you wanna make sure that the next knot that you're gonna make, and you can see it right there in between my, my fingers, and I wanna be able to slip that through nice and easily. So I'm gonna to wanna to make a second knot that's about three quarters of an inch to an inch from the knot that I just tied. So we're just gonna tie another knot here. All right, and again, making sure your cords stay nice and even. And I'm just gonna double check that my knot is good. There we go, fits nice and through. So what I'm gonna do is just repeat that process to kind of create one more knot. Just making sure that it is the right distance from the previous knot that I had strung. All right, so now I am all set and ready to go, and we are going to start setting it up into our loom now. So go ahead and take your loom and set it in front of you so that the slider portion is towards you. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take the side with the button and you're going to slip it into the notch up there so that your knot is on this side of the loom. And now what you're gonna do is you're going to slip the other side in, and I'm slipping it in between the first and second knot, and all you're gonna do is sort of pull it back and wait for it to sort of catch and get nice and taut. And you can see that my cords kind of rotate, so all I'm gonna do is rotate this side just a little bit so that my cords are nice and flat, and now you can see that they're parallel. So this is how your loom should be set up, and now we're ready to add on the Griffin silk. So take your silk, and what you're gonna wanna do is find the center point of your silk. There we are, I'm just gonna kinda hold it with my finger. And now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I get a nice even cord on both sides. You're gonna lay it over the top. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring both sides through and out without crisscrossing them. So your loom looks like this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push it up towards the top there because we want to start up near the top. And now I'm just going to tie a double overhand knot just to secure my cords in place. All right. And now you just kind of make sure that it's nice and taut in there. 
So the first step is to go down and around on the right side and down and around on the left side. So now your loom looks like that. That's that same motion that we did for that very first step. But now we're gonna start by adding our beads. So I'm gonna move some of my tools out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna begin by adding one of my teal seed beads here. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide that down. And I'm crossing my cord to the left and I'm picking up my left cord, going through that seed bead, and now crossing over to the right. So you're sort of catching that bead right in between there. And now go ahead and scooch it up and give your cord a nice little tug. Now the same, we're gonna go down and around and out down and around and out. And now because we want to get our beads going wider, I'm going to do two seed beads. And again, crossing over, I have my two seed beads here. And with my other cord going through the other way, and going out. So you're just crisscrossing your cords through both seed beads. So sort of through the same row. So now to repeat, go down and around, and out, down and around, and out. And for this next row, we're gonna pick up three seed beads now you'll notice that I'm just picking these up with my hands because they're size 8-0 seed beads, so they're a little large, but if you want, you've also probably noticed that I have a little extra stand here on my workspace, and this will also help you pick up those beads if you so desire. I kind of like to leave mine on the table, but it is completely up to you. And it'll show you how to use that in your instructions that you'll get with the Rapid Loom. So now I'm taking the other side of the cord and going through all three of my seed beads. So you're always going through the entire row and then you just wanna give it a nice little tug and make sure that it is nice and snug up against the other beads. So you can see how our loom is widening as we add more beads. So now that we have the starting portion, we're gonna start adding in those gold beads. So same process, down and out down and out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one seed bead, one of our center beads, in this case mine is a gold one, and one more seed bead. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide that all the way down. And now you're gonna take your needle and go through all three beads you're always going to always go through the entire row and pull that. And now you can see it's getting a little tighter in there because we have some different beads, but just go ahead and just keep on pulling. It should be a nice snug fit. And the idea is that we want this to be a nice structure. We don't want it to be flimsy. So now you're just gonna repeat the pattern in that center bead. So I will show you what that looks like here. So we're just gonna repeat that same pattern going all the way down. And then I'm going to show you how to finish it off. So I'm gonna leave you at this point to just continue that very same pattern with down and out and around, down and out and around, and then adding your row of one seed bead, one fire polish bead, one of your gold or silver beads, and then one seed bead. Okay, so I am adding the last few rows here, and as you can see, it's getting nice and tight here at the bottom. And as you work, you might need to loosen the tension. So to do that, you're just gonna kinda kick up that little teeth groove and kinda let it so that I get a little bit more slack there. So, okay, so when you get to about this point, you're gonna need to start thinking, do I wanna add another row of the 
main pattern seed bead or am I ready to start tapering off into the little triangle right there? I think I am probably going to get away with one more row. So I'm gonna add another row. Again, just the same technique that you've been working with here. I'm just gonna kinda tie that down here. And I think that's gonna be my last row of full seed beads because that was kinda getting tight to squish in there. So we're just gonna reverse the pattern that we did on the first time. And you can kinda see I'm using those needles to thread up through there now because my hole is much smaller. So you can't really get your fingers in there. But we're just gonna reverse that pattern. So we're gonna start with three seed beads. Sliding those down and going back through with the other needle. All right, I think this is gonna be a really nice fit. All right, and now two seed beads just kind of taper it off a little bit more. String those all the way down. Go through with the other needle. Making sure to catch both seed beads. There we go. All right. And the final one is our final one last seed bead. So don't forget to go down and out and around. There we go. You can see it starts to get a little tighter in there. But this is our last one, so we want it to be nice and flush up against the edge there. All right, so now you've added your last bead and just continuing the wrapping around, you're just gonna go down through, out and around, and down through, out and around, keeping them on the opposite sides. And now all we have left to do is just sort of tie it off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie one overhand knot, just to kind of finish off my work there. So you can kind of see my knot just sits in there. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do the wrap around one more time because you really want this to be nice and secure. So just go down and out and around and down and out and around one more time. And now we're just gonna repeat that process of tying one knot. There we go. So now it looks nice and clean there. And what I recommend is kind of letting a little slack go. And now we're gonna be using our E6000. And go ahead and pour a little bit onto, I like to use just a little sticky note here. You don't need very much. And make sure to close it back up before moving on because it'll dry up real quick. So go ahead and dip your toothpick or a little scrap of wire. And like I said, you really don't need a lot here. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is add a dab of glue there right on top of the knot. And you can kind of see that I'm just sort of pressing it into the griffin silk because it is a fabric, so it'll kind of soak it up. And while it's drying there, all I'm gonna do is secure it, oops, secure it with another knot. So you kind of put your knot right on top of it and that'll be nice and tight. 
And again, just a little tiny dab of glue just to make sure that those ends don't fray there. Right there. Now I recommend leaving your loom just like this for at least 20 minutes before trying to take it off and at least 24 hours before you try to wear it. You really want that glue to have a nice strong bond. But for the purposes of my video, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to trim off onto your loom. Okay, or trim it off of the loom. So I'm using flush cutters for this part because I like to get a nice flush cut there. And sometimes if you have some big scissors, it can be a little difficult to really get it in there. So all you're gonna do is just slide it out of the loom the same way you put it in, just very gently. Go ahead and set your loom aside. I'm gonna move my beads out of the way there. But now the last finishing touch is you can clip off the tails of your cord. And again, you can use flush cutters or scissors for this as well. So there you go. So be sure to let it dry, but you are all set with your loom bracelet. And I'm just gonna show you what our finished product looks like here. And you can do several knots. You can also do just the one there if you prefer. But this is the cotton cord wrapped loom bracelets. And these are exclusive kits brought to you by Bita Halik. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find many more videos and all of our exclusive kits at bitahalik.com.